Our environment is filled with examples of physical and chemical changes. What changes can we expect to observe? And how can we determine if a change is physical or chemical? Classifying a change as either chemical or physical will depend if there's a change in a substance's characteristic property. You'll remember that a characteristic property helps us to identify a substance. This can be thought of as a substance's personality, since its characteristic will set it apart from other substances. The objective of this lab is to classify changes as either physical or chemical. The materials that you'll need for this first lab are one 50 milliliter beaker, two pieces of chalk, a graduated cylinder, and some hydrochloric acid. Experiment one, observe the properties of a piece of chalk. Break the chalk in two. Observe the properties of the new small piece of chalk. We can conclude that the properties before and after are the same since the mass is not a characteristic property. Experiment two, observe the properties of a piece of chalk. And we'll pour 20 milliliters of hydrochloric acid into a 50 milliliter beaker. Place the piece of chalk in the beaker. We can conclude that the properties before and after are different since a precipitate is formed and there is a release of gas in the form of bubbles. A precipitate is simply a product different than the reactants, that is, something new is formed. The materials that you'll need for this second lab are two watch glasses, a magnet, a spatula, icing sugar, iron filings, and concentrated hydrochloric acid. Put a small quantity of icing sugar in the watch glass using a spatula. Observe its properties. Test the effect of a magnet on the icing sugar, placing the magnet underneath the watch glass. Put a small quantity of iron filings in the second watch glass. Test its magnetic properties. Combine the two substances and test the magnetic properties of the mixture. We can conclude that the properties before and after are the same since the mixture can be separated as it was before the experiment. The materials that you'll need for the next lab are a burner, a pair of tweezers, some nichrome wire, some magnesium, and some matches. First, light your heater. Using tweezers, hold the nichrome wire in the flame until it becomes red hot. Remove the nichrome wire from the heat and wait for it to cool. Observe its characteristics. We can conclude that this is a physical change since the nichrome wire remains the same as before the experiment. Observe the properties of the magnesium. Using tweezers, put it in the flame until it's red hot.
After the reaction, observe the properties. We can conclude that this is a chemical change because what is produced after the reaction is different than what we'd had before. Also, the release of light and heat indicates this is a chemical reaction. For the next lab, the materials that you'll need are a hot plate, some tongs, two watch glasses, a glass stirring rod, a spatula, a dropper, pure water, sodium iodide, and lead nitrate. For this experiment, put a small quantity of sodium iodine in a watch glass and observe the properties of the salt. Add a small amount of water and stir. Then put the watch glass on the hot plate to evaporate the water. Once the water has evaporated, observe the properties of the remaining substance. We can see that this reaction is a physical reaction because we're able to get the salt back. We can conclude that the properties before and after are the same since the salt remains unchanged. Add a small quantity of sodium iodide to the beaker and observe its characteristics. Next, add 20 milliliters of lead nitrate to the beaker. Use a glass stirring rod to stir the mixture. Remove approximately one milliliter of the residue and place it in the watch glass. Put the watch glass on the hot plate to evaporate the water. Since a precipitate is created, we can see that we can't recover the salt as in the previous experiment and this is obviously a chemical change. How can we categorize a physical change from a chemical change? It's helpful to remember that a chemical change usually can't be reversed. Also, remember that chemical changes can be identified using the following criteria. One, the creation of a precipitate. Two, the change of color. Three, the release of heat and or light. Four, the production of gas, sometimes seen as bubbles. Five, the creation of electricity, such as in a battery. Hopefully, you'll now have the knowledge to distinguish a physical change from a chemical change.